So what I'm going to do today is tell you about an AI article that I wrote recently that I just made a few simple tweaks to, and within 12 hours it was ranking one on Google. And so hopefully that's got your interest. I was pretty excited to see the results that I got from making some of these small changes to an AI written article, and I wanna take you through the steps that I did to make that happen. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I did. And maybe these are some techniques that you might be able to apply to your own blog posts written with your AI tool of choice. So here's the article that I'm talking about. That's right here, Camtasia versus ScreenFlow versus Descript, my experience with these screen recorders. So what you're watching right now is a screen recording that I've done with a tool called Camtasia. And during the course of my channel's lifespan over the last 12 months, I've tried a lot of different screen recorders, and specifically, uh, I've used three, Camtasia, ScreenFlow, and Descript. So what I wanted to do is write an article about this, and I wanted to see if SEOwriting.ai, which is my favorite AI writer, could help me write this article faster instead of just writing it completely by hand. I wanted to see if AI could automate that process somewhat. So the very first thing that you need to do is come up with a keyword. Typically, I'll go to Low Fruits, which is my keyword tool of choice. But in this case, I decided to go old school because I just wanted to see if Google Autocomplete could help me with this. X versus Y posts are pretty common. People do a lot of them. So in this case, I wanted to try this out. And so I did Camtasia versus ScreenFlow and right away, you see this, so you know people are searching for it. I'm in an incognito browser, by the way. So we'll add that and then do this versus, and there's Descript right there. So people are searching for Camtasia versus ScreenFlow versus Descript. And since I'm in this incognito browser, let's go ahead and show you. Here's my article. It's number one. I mean, they show videos first, right? Because it is a screen recorder. There's lots of YouTube videos about this topic. But as far as blog posts go, here I am, number one. Camtasia versus ScreenFlow versus Descript. I'm above Quora, above Reddit. G2.com is a fairly well-known website. So is SourceForge. The deal is, you know, this is brand new. I just got, I just have this ranking here. It's number one. Now, like I've mentioned before, Google likes to do a lot of experimentation. So they, they liked my content and they pushed it to, num to number one. Now, if you're watching this video three months from now and people aren't clicking on my link to go to my article to read that article, it will drop down in the rankings because if users aren't engaging with this article, that sends signals to Google that I may not have hit the mark from the standpoint of search intent, and so they'll drop me lower in the rankings. But as of today, that's where I'm at, and this is an incognito browser. So let's go ahead and move on and take a look and see what did I do to make this happen. I just used Google Autocomplete to find my keyword. Then I went into SEO writing, and I did a one-click blog post. And again, my main keyword, Camtasia versus ScreenFlow versus Descript. If I had an idea, this would be a good keyword. And all three of these screen recorders are quite popular, so I knew people would be searching for them as well. So because I didn't want to write this completely by hand, I wanted to use SEO writing to write the article. Uh, obviously, uh, I'm not going to rewrite this article here, but I want to tell you one thing that I did that is different than the way that I usually use the one-click blog post tool. And I think it was pretty helpful. So you have your course settings. I set those, friendly tone of voice, first person point of view. Um, now, under the SEO section, what I did, this is important. Neuron Writer is the, the SEO optimization tool that I use. And when I created uh, a content query, a Neuron Writer, based on Camtasia versus ScreenFlow versus Descript, I went ahead and I had Neuron Writer give me a list of terms that I wanted to have in my SEOwriting.ai article. So it doesn't really matter what AI writer you use. 
uh, in Neuron Writer, you would get your list of terms. If your SEO writer allows you to put in keywords, then this is where you would get them. So back to the one-click blog post, this is where I put in my Neuron Writer terms that I wanted to have in the article. So here we are in the outline editor. This is where I did something a little bit different than I normally do. Uh, obviously, if you enable the outline editor, you have a couple different ways you can go. They have a tool in SEO writing called Magic Bag, which basically just makes the outline for you automatically. In this case, what I did is I created my own set of headings to use in the article. So when you're looking at my article here, all of these headings are ones that I put in myself. I created these headings. And I sort of use the same series of headings for screen flow, features I liked, features I didn't like, example of a screen flow recording, why I stopped using screen flow. Descript, features I liked, features I didn't like, etc. When I went to Camtasia section, I did de delve a little deeper into the Camtasia piece of the outline. But the bottom line is uh, I created my own outline, which I typically don't do. So the reason I created my own outline and manually entered it myself is I wanted to differentiate my article from all the other articles that do comparisons of Camtasia, ScreenFlow, and Descript. I wanted my own personal outline based on my own experience and what I wanted to share with people. So this is where I get back to, you know, it does really help to have some background and knowledge in the blog niche that you're writing about so you can do these kinds of things. But anyway, that's what I did. I created my own outline. After I did that, I just had SEO writing create the article. And then this is the article that it created here. And what I did after I got this is I copy it and then I dropped it into Neuron Writer. And I wanted to see what my initial score was now, my initial score in Neuron Writer was right around 62. Notice it's at a 71 right now. And the way that I was able to tweak that score is I was able to adjust my H1. I was able to adjust my title to get the score a little bit better. And then I went in and I looked at some of my various headings and made just a couple adjustments here and there and tweak that score up to a 71. The highest of all selected competitors in this for this particular keyword is a 60. I'm at a 71, which I'm sure helped with my Google ranking as well. Once I had tweaked the headings, I went in and here are the key things that I did to, to this article that are different than I typically do. I went in and I really cut the fluff in this article. Um, this was a fairly technical article, and what SEO writing produced was good, but it had a lot of extra information that I just didn't think I needed to have in this article, because people are just trying to decide, what should I choose, Camtasia, ScreenFlow, or Descript? So what I did is I started just to trim all the fat out of the article, and that way it was just quicker and easier to scan through. So I did that first, and then after I did that, I went back up to my introduction. Now, I wrote a lot of the introduction, not all of it, but most of it, and I shortened it because I wanted people to get right to the key takeaways and jump right in and start reading. And then I went through each section, and if there was a sentence or two that I could add based on my own experience, I did that. One of the reasons I'm doing this is I want to have a human touch to this article. If there is a way that the Google algorithm is out checking to see what articles are mostly AI written, if Google's able to check that, which I'm sure they can, I wanted an article that had a better mix of human written content and AI written content, and I wanted it throughout the article. So that's what I did as I went through and I added my own pieces of information. Here's a perfect example of why you need to know something about what you're writing about. I put in a note. I had to quit using ScreenFlow after I upgraded my Intel-based MacBook Air to my MacBook Pro running Sonoma. 
for some reason, the audio waveform suddenly appeared so small. The editing was nearly impossible. That was a piece of information that I knew was important to bring forward to people that weren't in other articles. And this wasn't going to get produced by another AI writing tool. After I went through and made some little tweaks here and there with my own writing, adding a few little stories, a few little bits of information, when I got to the conclusion, I did cut a lot of fluff out of the conclusion, and then I rewrote that conclusion. Pretty much most of it is written by myself. So that's what I did to the article, went through, adjusted some headings, got the score up to 71, added my own human written content to tweak this so it didn't appear to be just all AI generated. Lastly, because I'm concerned about readability, I ran it through Grammarly. And once I got through running it through Grammarly, I had this 99 overall score, which was good. I just wanted it to be really easy to read. Once I got through writing the article in Neuron Writer, I copied it, I put it into Grammarly, I went through and I used uh, all of the suggestions that Grammarly applied to the document where I could, where I thought they made sense. I ended up with this 99 overall score, which was fine. Then I pulled it over into ghost.org, which is where I write my articles. That's the platform I use for blogging. A little different than WordPress. I do have some videos on ghost.org if you want to see that, but this is what I use for blogging, and this is where I finalize the article, putting in internal links, external links, links out to some YouTube videos, etc. Now, after everything was rewritten, I pulled it over into originality.ai. So typically, most AI writers I use, when I pull the AI written uh, article over into originality.ai and I do a scan. Usually I get a score something like 94% AI, 6% original. Now I added a lot of my own touches to this article, made some tweaks here and there in the introduction, the conclusion, etc. So by the time it got done scanning the article, I was at 79% AI and 21% original. I'd like to shoot for a 75-25 mix, but I got really close, so that was good enough for me. And again, I don't know if Google cares if you have an AI article that's just completely AI as long as it's helpful to the readers, but I just feel that Google's going to start scrutinizing articles more. And so anytime you can add a human touch or flair to your AI written article, I think it's only going to help you. You know, I just base it on here I am at number one. Normally when I write an article in any AI writer and I just release it with hardly any changes except going through it and cutting out anything that I think is non-factual, I rarely end up at number one. In fact, I never have. I might jump in at number seven or number eight most of the time I'm in the top 20, maybe the top 25. This is the first time I've ended up number one. Like I said, I haven't tested this enough for it to be statistically significant, but am I willing to write other articles in the same format that I just shared with you? Definitely, because I think there's something here. I think Google looked at it as a positive thing, and I plan to rewrite a lot of articles this way and to also generate future articles in this fashion. Of course, there's lots of other things that go into where an article ranks. Your domain rating, your age of your domain, how often you're posting to your blog. There's just lots of other factors that contribute to where you end up from a ranking standpoint. And like I'll repeat again and again, Google is always testing. You know, they'll throw you up like they did here at number one for me. But then if nobody ever clicks on this and there's no user engagement, I can guarantee you it'll slowly start to drop in the rankings if people don't engage with the article. So there's a lot of things going on. You know, it's not an exact science, but it's a lot of experimentation. So in the interest of full transparency, I just want to mention all of the products Neuron Writer, SEO Writing.ai, Low Fruits. I'm an affiliate for all those products. So if you click on a link in the description, I will get a commission. 
I hope you found this helpful. So until next time, take care.